So my barbecue blew out a tire. After sitting all winter, it flattened out and cracked. Well, I'll show you how I 3D printed a new one on this week's Filament Friday. So here's the wheel off my barbecue. And this thing is like two pieces that were injected molded and then spot welded together at these little points in the wheel. And it's hollow, it's real easy to crush. This thing is really weak. I can see why it broke. So I'm gonna print these two replacement wheels. One I'm gonna print on the Flash Forge Dreamer, and the other one I'm gonna print on my recently repaired Leonardo. That's right, I call it a Leonardo da Vinci because it's easier and more fun to say than a reflash da Vinci. So anyway, let me show you how I made these wheels in Tinkercad. So I started in Tinkercad by pulling a cylinder in and then resizing it to 150 by 150 and then made it 34 millimeters tall. This was the basic wheel. Now I needed to make treads, so I brought in another cylinder and I made it 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters and just made this thing really tall and then I turned it into a hole and placed it against the wheel. So this would cut into the wheel and then I grouped the two together and I used the align tool to center it. Now I needed to back it up a little bit here because it's going in too deep. Now I wanted to duplicate this and then bring it across to the other side like this directly across and then I grabbed everything centered those two and then grabbed these two posts and made them a group and then centered the group to the wheel that way they're automatically centered now that I have that set I want to duplicate it and go around it so to start whoops let me go back here all I want is the uh, the two posts so I'm gonna move duplicate it and then move it 10 degrees and then edit duplicate edit duplicate all the way around and this thing's gonna automatically jump 10 degrees and then once I'm done I can group all these together and I've got my tread. Now the original wheel had a solid line through the center of it so let me fix that. I'll bring in this tube and I'm gonna resize that to 150 by 150 make it 10 millimeters tall and then I'm gonna center this to the tread to the wheel. Well let's make it a different color here so it's easier to see. So I'll align it X and Y and now I want to align it to the Z so it's centered to the wheel and group all this together I've got the basic part of my wheel so now I needed to make this a little more attractive so I put the work plane on the top of the wheel and then I brought in a torus and made it 130 millimeters by 130 millimeters and 10 millimeters tall now I just manually positioned it to the center here I can align it later but I want to set this into the wheel so I'm gonna set this to minus 5 below the uh, be below the plane so it's actually going into the wheel and then I'll turn it into a hole now I want one on the other side so I'm gonna edit duplicate and then drop the uh, duplicate below the wheel way below because I'll reposition in a minute and now I'm ready to position so I'll bring the plane in back to its normal spot and then I'm gonna bring that duplicate up so it's minus 5 above the <laughs> the plane. So now they both go five millimeters into the wheel and I, I'll align them centered both X and Y and then I'll group them together and then all that's left to do is to put the hub on it and then a hole through the center. So I'm gonna do that by putting the plane back on top and I'm gonna bring in a cone and I'm gonna size this thing 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters I'm gonna drag it up because I'm actually gonna cut the top of this off and now I'm gonna bring in a block and I know I want this whole assembly to be 50 millimeters tall so I move the work plane back to the bottom put the block in there and I set the block to be offset 50 millimeters now I resize the block make it big enough that it covers everything make it into a hole and now I can see how my my hubs gonna look so it's a little bit too pointed so I'll bring it down I like the way that looks I'll adjust everything so everything's centered and then I'm gonna group it together and now I've got my wheel with a hub. The only thing left now is to make the center hole for the shaft. So I know I need a hole 8 millimeters in diameter. So I brought in a cylinder, made it that big, made it into a hole, 
brought it all the way through the center, aligned it, and then grouped it together, and I have my finished wheel. And here it is. All finished, looking decent. Let me turn it on its side so you can see what this thing will look like. I'm happy with the result. So now I need to download the .stl file, send it to Simplify 3D, and print it out. So here's the file brought into Simplify 3D, and it's on my FlashForge Dreamer. It barely fits. And now I'm going to use an ABS setting, medium, uh, right extruder only. And then I'm going to do a 0.25 layer height, five top and bottom layers. And look at eight shells. I'm using eight shells. See how the outer ring and the inner ring are very solid? That's what I want. That's what the shells give you. And now I'm going to do a 5% infill. That picture I just showed was actually 30%. And then I'm going to go um, a little bit of supports on the bottom to support the, uh, the arch, which turns out that was a mistake. 225 degrees C. 90 degrees on the uh, bed and I'm ready to slice this thing and send it to the printer. So here it is sliced and I'm ready to send it to the Flash Forge Dreamer. This is not a short print. This thing was estimated to take 10 hours and 28 minutes and here it is printing on the Flash Forge Dreamer. And this was printing really good and then midway, almost to the top it ran out of filament. So I ended up with a print mostly done. So rather than reprint it, here's what I did. I took the file, I measured the wheel, it was 31 millimeters tall, so I just put an offset of minus 31 into the same file on Simplify 3D, and that lowered it so only thing showing was what missed because of the filament running out. So I just sliced that, put that on the SD card, and then printed that, and I'll glue it together later. Here's the outer ring all clamped down and glued in place, but let me show you how I did the center hub. So here's the center hub. I just used some super glue pro version, spread a little bit on both surfaces, and then just kind of eyeballed it and lined up the hole, gave a little bit of pressure, and then I clamped it down at four points. This way it was being held all the way around. Now I could have clamped right in the center, but my clamps weren't long enough. So this worked out even better though, because every corner was taken care of or every part of the circle was taken care of and it held really well. So here's the two wheels and the original. This one was printed on the Flashforge Dreamer. The sides came out pretty good. And this is PETG. Now it's really rough in here where the uh, support was. So if I did this again, I think probably split these in two and then glue them together. But it came out pretty good. And you can see that I glued this on and the lip and you can barely tell. And then this is the one that was printed on the Leonardo. And it kind of looks like I glued this one. I don't know why there's a gap there, but it's still connected. And this is the good side. And then the sides itself are kind of rough. Uh, I got a little bit of shifting going on. And I had a little bit of splitting that I used some acetone and a clamp to close that. And then this one was rough as well from the support. So both of these were sliced in Simplify 3D. So I expected that to uh, break away easier and not be so rough. So the final step was to install it on the barbecue. So I took off the old wheel, slid on the new one, put on a washer, and then the locking clip. And now I just needed to take out the block and test it out. And there you have it. It didn't crush and it rolls fine. So there you have it. A 3D printed replacement wheel for my barbecue. And it's a lot stronger than the original. And if I need to change anything, I can modify the design and print a new one. If it breaks down the road, I'll print a new one. Now I know some people will probably comment that they could just go to the store and buy one or go on Amazon and find a replacement. Yeah, maybe. You got to get that right hole size and everything, but maybe you can. Personally, I'd rather sit and do Tinkercad than sit in front of the computer shopping on Amazon or go to the store trying to find the right wheel. And this really only took me 45 minutes to make. The printers did the work. I made the file, I sent it to them at night, went to bed. The next day, I had two wheels. Well, except for the one that ran out of plastic, but other than that, I had two wheels. It's the fun of designing and creating. That's what I love about 3D printing and making practical things like this. That's what I really enjoy because it shows that the 3D printer can be used for more than just making toys or trinkets or whatever. 
And people who really question this, I think deep down they want a 3D printer. They're just trying to justify not spending the money. And I understand. But at some point, I'll probably print something that they go, man, I got to get a 3D printer. So if you like what I'm doing here and you want to help promote the channel, I now have Filament Friday stickers. And I'll send them to you for free. Just send me a self-addressed stamped envelope to the address in the description of this video. I recently got a, another letter, this time from Morgan Williams, who sent me a self-addressed stamped envelope and a note on the back of the envelope. And Morgan says, thank you so much. I love your videos. Thanks, Morgan. I love that you watch them. I really appreciate it. And then Morgan says the sticker is going to go on their 3D printer. How cool is that? I don't know which printer they have, but the fact that my sticker is going to go on your printer, I love that. Take a picture of it, tweet it out so I can see it. I really would like to see that. And I'm going to send you an extra one just so you have an extra one to stick wherever you want to stick it. So thanks, Morgan. If you guys want a sticker, like I said, just send me the envelope. I'll get it out to you. And if you like what I'm doing here and you like this video, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe. I'm close to that 10K and I'm probably going to do some kind of giveaway when we hit 10K. I may even have a special guest showing up. So stay tuned for that. And if you want to know more about what's going on behind the scenes, there's a link up here for Patreon. I only ask for a dollar a month that helps support the channel. And then you get behind the scenes information of what's going on, such as this getting repaired, the maker front that caught fire, um, several other things. My, my fabricator mini that had a problem, an x-axis problem that I fixed. All that was covered on Patreon. It's stuff I can quickly do in a blog post or a few pictures that I don't have time to do a video. So people seem to love it, and we have some great conversations on there. So if you want to join us, it really works out to 25 cents a video, a dollar a month. That's all I ask. So come join us. So that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time on Filament Friday.